Hello and welcome to day 34 of our daily Bible reading. We begin with a word of prayer. Almighty God, your word is the voice that speaks to us, encourages us, and strengthens us. May these readings give us strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Amen. And today we begin at Exodus chapter 17, verse 8 through chapter 19, verse 15. Amalek attacks Israel and is defeated. Then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some men for us and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him, and fought with Amalek, while Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed, and whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew heavy, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on either side, so his hands were steady until the sun set. And Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this as a remembrance in a book and recite it in the hearing of Joshua. I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. He said, A hand upon the banner of the Lord. The Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Chapter 18, Jethro's Advice Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for his people Israel, how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. After Moses had sent away his wife Zipporah, his father-in-law Jethro took her back, along with her two sons. The name of the one was Gershom, for he had said, I have been an alien in a foreign land. And the name of the other was Eliezer, for he said, had said, The God of my father was my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, along with Moses' sons and wife, came into the wilderness where Moses was encamped at the mountain of God. He sent word to Moses, I, your father-in-law Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law. He bowed down and kissed him. Each asked after the other's welfare, and they went into the tent. Then Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the hardship that had found them on the way, and how the Lord had delivered them. Jethro rejoiced for all the good that the Lord had done to Israel in delivering them from the Egyptians. Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord who has delivered you from the Egyptians and from Pharaoh. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods, because he delivered the people from the Egyptians when they dealt arrogantly with, with them. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God, and Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law in the presence of God. The next day Moses sat as judge for the people while the people stood around him from morning until evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, What is this that you are doing for the people? Why do you sit alone while all the people stand around you from morning until evening? Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have a dispute, they come to me and... I decide between one person and another, and I make known to them the statutes and instructions of God. Moses' father-in-law said to him, What you are doing is not good. You will surely wear yourself out, both you and these people with you, for the task is too heavy for you. You cannot do it alone. Now listen to me. I will give you counsel. 
and God be with you. You should represent the people before God and bring their cases to God. Teach them the statutes and instructions and make known to them the way they are to go and the things they are to do. You should also look for able men among all the people, men who fear God, are trustworthy, and hate dishonest gain. Set them as officers over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Let them sit as judges for the people at all times. Let them bring every important case to you, but decide every minor case themselves. So it will be easier for you, and they will bear the burden with you. If you do this and God, com and God so commands you, then you will be able to endure, and all these people will go to their homes in peace. So Moses listened to his father-in-law and did all that he had said. Moses chose able men from all Israel and appointed them as heads over the people, as officers over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens, and they judged the people at all times. Hard cases they brought to Moses, but any minor case they decided themselves. Then Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went off to his own country. Chapter 19 The Israelites Reach Mount Sinai On the third new moon, after the Israelites had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that very day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore, your e bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses went, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken we will do. Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud, in order that the people may hear when I speak with you, and so trust you ever after. The People Consecrated when Moses had told the words of the people to the Lord, the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and prepare for the third day, because on the third day the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. You shall set limits for, all, for the people all around, saying, be careful not to go up the mountain or to touch the edge of it. Any who touch the mountain shall be put to death. No hand shall touch them, but they shall be stoned or shot with arrows. Whether animal or human being, they shall not live. When the trumpet sounds a long blast, they may go up on the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people. He consecrated the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said to the people, Prepare for the third day. Do not go near a woman. In Matthew uh, chapter 22, verse 34, through chapter 23, verse 12, the greatest commandment. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, an expert in the law, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The question about David's son. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. Chapter 23 Jesus Denounces Scribes and Pharisees then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you, and follow it, but do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others, but they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues, and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers and sisters and call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. Psalm 27 Verses 7 through 14. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. And Proverbs chapter 6, verses 27 through 35. Can fire be carried in the bosom without burning one's clothes? Or can one walk on hot coals without scorching the feet? So is he who sleeps with his neighbor's wife. No one who touches her will go unpunished. Thieves are not despised who steal only to satisfy their appetite when they are hungry. Yet if they are caught, they will pay sevenfold. They will forfeit all the goods of their house. But he who commits adultery has no sense. He who does it destroys himself. He will get wounds and dishonor, and his disgrace will not be wiped away. For jealousy arouses a husband's fury, and he will show no restraint when he takes revenge. He will accept no compensation, and will refuse a bribe no matter how great. Well, this has been the Word of God and the Word of Life. Thanks be to God. We'll see you tomorrow.